As someone who hasn't always been a YouTuber and who has had a very normal job, which people have tried to intrude on for their own amusement, let me just tell you right now, nobody appreciates what you're doing except you and your however many subscribers. <laughs> Hi and welcome back to me talking about whatever I want. Today I want to talk about online classes and how they're using the Zoom app and why that's going terribly wrong. But first, of course, I'd like to do a comment shout out. This comment actually goes out to Casey Chapone, who says, plot twist, D'Angelo won't share his skincare routine because he actually stole the skin from someone else. It's not that clear. So today's situation is pretty much the perfect story to represent 2020 as a whole. It involves social distancing, YouTubers behaving badly, the FBI getting involved because things got way too serious. It's like something created by an AI. Like we just, we asked deep machine learning to create an article. And this whole article revolved around Zoom. So Zoom is a video conferencing app. It's like Skype, but for businesses. So I'm on their website and you can see it's been used by people like 20th Century Fox, Uber, and even Viva. You know it's a big deal when Viva uses your software. I have no idea what Viva is. But honestly, Zoom is the industry standard when it comes to this sort of thing. Industry standard, despite having a couple of security issues. Now, recently, despite being kind of already at the top, Zoom has boomed in popularity because of the pandemic. Everyone's using it for, like, everything because they can't physically meet anymore since so many schools and businesses got shut down. Zoom is now the number one free app on the app store right now and they went from 10 million users a day to 200 million and it's only been a couple months according to this CNBC article. And of course with more viewers comes more money so Zoom's stock has recently surged as you can see from this chart. It's almost creepy how closely Zoom's stock market surge mirrors a certain other chart that we're looking at right now. But the reason this is all a big deal is not really the businesses using it. The issue is that Zoom has become the top used video conferencing app for schools. It's blown up so much in the world of academics that they added this section to their website right here, educating over Zoom, where basically they are giving away more free features for schools that are affected by the pandemic, which is nice. You know, like overall, if you were just to look at this from a glance, nothing seems out of place. But like I mentioned, Zoom has some security issues. And when you couple those security issues with a bunch of high school students, I think you can see how this is very quickly going wrong. Basically, it's way too easy to join someone else's Zoom class. All you have to do is find a code from somewhere, someone's computer, anything like that. Now, there are some features you can enable to stop that from happening, but the issue is that teachers <laughs> don't have training on using Zoom. They just got thrust into that situation because the school's closed down and they still have to do their job. So it's not like these teachers know how to prevent this from happening. So good old YouTube can't leave well enough alone, right? If it's not bad enough that random people are getting into random classes, YouTubers have now started specifically crashing Zoom classes for content. Here we have James Charles tweeting, I want to join your guys' Zoom classes, ha 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 ha. Which honestly, what kind of ego trip is that? Like, don't get me wrong, I'm all about having my ego stroked as a YouTuber, but you really just want to join an environment full of teenage girls because you know, like, 80% of them are probably subscribed to you, right? Anyway, most of the comment section under James's tweet was basically praising the idea of that. But I did notice an adult and she said, don't do that. Teachers are already trying hard enough to keep their kids' attention and have work and activities prepared for the kids to do. You would just be an interruption and a distraction in the little time they get on Zoom. Which for some reason I assumed would be a popular opinion. Instead, this person just wound up getting trashed by James's fan base because they were like, it's a joke, you must be fun at parties. Honestly, even if I'm not fun at parties, oh well, if I'm right, I'm right. And this person is definitely right. Like, what do you think a kid in school cares more about? That their teacher is doing their best to teach them or that their favorite YouTuber could potentially join and disrupt their class? It's like, no wonder the adults wound up getting drowned out in that conversation. But of course, the assertions that it's a joke, notwithstanding, a bunch of people wound up doing it anyway. Trolling random online classes, 20,000 views. Joining random Zoom classes, 200,000 views. Crashing random online college classes. 4 million views. Why? So yeah, harassing teachers for content became a whole subgenre within the last week or so on YouTube. And of course, when you have people making bottom of the barrel content, you're gonna have something even further below that. There are just tons of compilation videos of random clips of this. Someone even turned their entire channel into a compilation channel of online school trolling. So like, I guess as 
fun or lighthearted as it was supposed to be, this obviously had downsides. For one, like I said, nobody seems to be thinking of the teachers. This comment right here says that random kids join the class and make fun of their teacher. Besides that, YouTubers are basically encouraging their followers to go do it as well by setting such a terrible example. This person in the comments right here is asking for people's Zoom codes and passwords, that way they can join and cuss your teacher out. And what I personally think it might be the worst out of all is that people are losing productivity. My school ended up canceling the group FaceTime for the rest of the week because of this. Brought me more time to sleep instead. Honestly, how hard is it to not harass people? YouTubers are out here getting people's classes canceled. And I never thought I would see the day that we got that desperate for content. And I say this as somebody who uploads every single day. My opinion on the matter is, for the most part, no one's really being hurt by the Zoom trolling. And honestly, some of the clips were funny, but it's just really hard to laugh when you think about how out of touch these YouTubers are with reality, as usual. Like, as a YouTuber, we can afford to sit around during normal business hours and laugh at a camera and mess with other people, but these teachers, they still have work to do that's assigned to them that they have to complete in order to keep their jobs. Interfering with that just because you are not in that position is not that comedic to me personally. Basically, I think if you can't realize as a YouTuber that the pandemic is hitting those teachers that you're messing with much harder than it's hitting you, I don't think you should be making the content. In fact, like all situations like this, some people started going way too far, shouting profanity, etc. That guy specifically, according to Twitter, one of his viewers sent in the Zoom chat a video of somebody and a rat that I'm not gonna get into detail because I would get this video taken down. Now, if you're wondering if that's legal, it's not. I mean, crashing random people's Zoom classes is not against the law, even though it might just be a little dumb, but Crashing these classes and sharing illegal content is, it's in the title, it's illegal. And it actually has a name, Zoom bombing. See, I found a New York Times article and it turns out that the YouTubers doing this for fun and games and ad revenue is kind of just the tip of the iceberg. Instead of just random trolling, there are actually people spreading hate speech and targeted harassment. People are joining Zoom calls and screencasting adult videos. Zoom has a drawing feature and they're using that to draw inappropriate imagery as well as slurs. And then of course, some people are just shouting the racial slurs. You just a bad person and bad at technology. So this New York Times article actually investigated and found the groups that were dedicated to Zoom bombing. They're on Twitter, Instagram, Reddit, and 4chan, which is not surprising in the least. In this article, they detail how they found messages of someone claiming that they're gonna crash a Baptist church call and share gore and other inappropriate content that I still can't name. On top of that, there's entire Discord servers dedicated to Zoom bombing, where people have actually turned it into like a competition. There assigning points based on how badly you can harass the people in the Zoom call. The New York Times found over a dozen Discord servers dedicated to that, one which had over 2,000 members, and people are branching out from just harassing school children and teachers and business people. They're targeting harassment against Alcoholics Anonymous meetings and online hotlines, just to name a few places. So like, whereas I wouldn't say the YouTubers doing this are bad people, they're just being really dumb, there are actual bad people doing very bad and very illegal things through the power of Zoom. Now, of course, the social media platforms that I named want nothing to do with this, so almost all of them spoke out against it since it's against their terms of service. Instagram is fighting back by blocking the hashtags for Zoom bombing and removing accounts dedicated to it. Reddit shut down entire subreddits that were being used for Zoom bombing. Discord closed the servers and banned some users over it as well. 4chan did nothing because why would they do anything, what did you expect? It's probably still happening on 4chan as we speak. Basically, everyone was trying to step in and stop this from happening. But of course, it was still spiraling out of control, and that is when the FBI got involved, ladies and gentlemen. Some of the hate speech and illegal content was getting so bad that people had been just repeatedly reporting it to the FBI, and so they stepped up with their statement. In this statement, they outlined that one teacher actually got doxxed on a Zoom call, and another Zoom class had someone flash swastika tattoos to the students. So the FBI gave out what probably could have avoided a lot of this in the first place, which is a handy tutorial on how to stop random people from joining your Zoom classes. Basically just disable community screen sharing, stop sending the links in public spaces, and enable the password slash waiting room. That way you have to get screened before you can join the call with 
you know, the literal children. Hijacking teleconferences to share illegal content is a cyber crime. So if you see it, report it. And that's also what they put in their FBI statement. So Discord, Instagram, Reddit, and the FBI all responded and tried to make the situation better. What did Zoom actually do? They responded and honestly, I think they're doing the best they can. They said in the response blog that they posted that they're freezing the work on all their other features and they're gonna devote all their attention to stopping the Zoom bombing. They switched all of the education Zoom profiles to where you have to use the waiting room feature. And I think most importantly, they were just honest in their press release that the app blew up bigger than they could have expected. I think as much as Zoom dropped the ball, it's important to remember that they did start getting 20 times the amount of traffic that they were used to pretty much overnight because it's something that they had no control over. But it really seems like they're doing their best to cut down on the problem and that they wanna be open with people because it says starting next week, they're gonna hold a webinar where they answer for the question, so. Ultimately, the situation is still an issue, but the FBI's on it, Zoom's on it, etc. I'm very disappointed in the YouTubers. They're just making us all look bad as always. And honestly, how does it feel to wind up in the same story as uh, federal criminals. As someone who hasn't always been a YouTuber and who has had a very normal job, which people have tried to intrude on for their own amusement, let me just tell you right now, nobody appreciates what you're doing except you and your however many subscribers. I feel bad for the teachers involved, but I'm sure they'll be okay. Honestly, probably not the worst thing they've heard in a class full of 14 to 16 year olds. And obviously the literal criminals that are involved, uh, I hope the FBI catches them. That's where the situation is as of now. Who knows, it may get better, but it probably will. I mean, let's be honest, this webinar that Zoom is about to hold is definitely going to get Zoom bombed. So honestly, who cares?